All right, man, y'all tuning in live, bro. We still live on location, Chi-Town, Illinois. We cracking. You know what I'm talking about? We got my dog in the building. Yeah, yeah. Stizzle, yeah. Amari Stat, Stadamai in the building, man. Y'all tune in, lock in. We about to talk a whole lot, a whole lot of Phoenix, New York, Israel. My dog got a lot to say. start off this first question we asked everybody is like when you got to the league and you like start playing and stuff like who's the first player to like bust your ass like the first player to give you numbers and you went back was like oh shit these motherfuckers can play now first got to the league yeah oh man when I first got to the league it's probably Kevin Garnett I mean, we we went hand to hand, you know. I had I had 38. I think Garnett had like 44, and that was the first time I felt like, all right, this is a real league right here, like this. You know what I'm saying? This ain't no joke out here. Yeah, yeah we play it every night, every night, every night. I went straight out of high school. I feel like that's like a fraternity, secret, secret, a secret society, fraternity. Like, no question. Like, it's only a few of us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To make it and even just be here and play on that level straight out from the high school. And I know you went through a, a crazy journey. I went through two high schools. I went to two high schools. Then I went straight out of high school. Like, tell us about like your journey on your high schools, like from your freshman year all the way to your like senior year. Yeah, I mean, I went, I went, I went. I had to make decisions on my own. My mom was a gangster, so she was always locked up in and out. And my dad died when I was twelve. Mm-hmm. So I was going to Lake Wells High School in Florida, and I started hanging around the wrong crowd. So my grades start dropping. And so I transferred, I went to my coach and said, listen, I gotta, if I stick around here, I won't, you know, I won't stay eligible. So I gotta transfer. And he said, well, there's two options you can go to, Oak Hill Academy or Mount Zion. Oak Hill Academy, all boys school, <laughs> local, the next convenience store is a 30 minute walk. Right. I'm like, nah, all boys school, I can't do it. It's Mount Zion, Tracy McGrady went there. Right, I remember that. Came out of high school. So I was like, all right, cool, I go to Mount Zion. I went to Mount Zion. I was there for a little bit. The school start, you know what I'm saying, not panning out the way I wanted it to, so I transferred back to Florida. So I went to a lot of different transfers, making decisions as, as a 15-year-old, trying to figure it out. But it wasn't easy. You know, it was a tough grind, but I stayed locked in to basketball, so I was always good right there. I was straight with basketball. Other than that, it was tough. When I came up, the reason that I felt like I was better, because the only time I played with kids my age was when I was in high school. Right. Outside of that, I was playing a pro-am or I was playing with adults. Right. I never was a weight room person, so I got my game off just playing basketball so much and sure. learned from other people or took moves from other people. When you came up, like, for you to get that good, you had to be working with somebody or you was taking from somebody or seeing a game or, or being able to play on levels right. that you're not used to playing with. So how, how did you get that? Yeah, to, I played in all the pro-am leagues. I played in the men's leagues. I played every chance I got a chance to play, I played. Play. Mm-hmm. My senior year, I started lifting weights heavy. Mm-hmm. I started really getting into the, well, actually, I take that back. When I got to Mount Zion, mm-hmm. Mount Zion was a basketball factory. Yeah. Right? I was that was young, how they was for. Yeah, I was up there with fifth year, seniors and fifth year seniors, and I was a freshman going into mm-hmm. my sophomore year. Yeah. And everybody was like top players in the country. And these cats was running the football, we used to go to Duke Football Stadium, Wallace Wade, Run, touch every step around, shaped like in a U shape. Yeah, you got to touch every step around and back. Mm. So I was like, man, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went, man, I'm not, I'm not running this stadium. So first, like my first day of school, man, it was like six in the morning. Coach wake us up. All right, put us, a, give us a gallon of water. There you go. Drink this. What's going Drink on? Drink a gallon of water. Jump on. The bus is ready. Get on the bus. Go to Duke football stadium and run. He say run around and back. Like what? You see the side of the stadium, man. <laughs> I got halfway. I got around and halfway back. I got to the top. Put my back on the wall, like on the like on the like on the bleachers. Uh-huh. And I slid down, and it was over. I laid down. And I was done. Yeah. That's when I realized this is a basketball factory. This is what they do. This is, I went to school, out the school, back to the gym. Yeah. This was every day. 
So I realized at that point, like, I got to start getting this weight room. I got to start training my body properly. Yeah. This is my sophomore year. Hmm. And so from that point on, I started taking basketball, like, to a whole new level. A whole new level. And that's when I became, like, the top player in the country. Because my freshman year, I was only the top 100 in the state. Yeah. Which I wasn't even ranked in the country. In the country, yeah. And I started playing AAU basketball. Because I didn't play basketball organized until I was 14. Yeah. And Florida's a football state. Right. Yeah. So they got all football programs and baseball programs. And so, until the Junior Magic came into play in Florida, in Orlando, like in the Central Florida area, mm -hmm. around, I think, 98 or so, that's when I first started playing basketball, organized with a coach, out of bounds, referees. <laughs> right. I was 14. Yeah. And then from that point on, I was drafted at 18. Yeah. So four years of playing organized basketball, that's pretty, I was there. That's quick. And once I got to the league, I mean, well, even before then, like with my pre-draft workouts, man, I remember my first workout, my pre-draft workout. My man say, he say dribble left hand, dribble to the left twice, spin back up and under. I ain't know what he was talking about, man. <laughs> man I went to the left and just took off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just bang it. Right. I don't know what you're talking about, I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. <laughs> My dog Drew Gooden said, man, he say when, from that first, he say from that first workout to the next time we took, to when I saw you in summer league, he said, I've never seen a player improve so much in that short period of time. Because <laughs> yeah. at the time, I didn't know a lot of things I didn't know because yeah. I was only been playing organized yeah, basketball you know for four years. Are, yeah. So I didn't know the fundamentals on how to do anything yeah. kind of like in a structured way. I was learning at the time. My high school coach was like, hey, this kid, this kid's great. Just go out there and play. Yeah. So, so that's you know what I'm saying? So for, for you, like a lot of people say, man, it was, it, was a, it was hard. It was a long. Do you really feel like it was hard for you to make the NBA? Like you started playing at 14, four years later, you getting drafted number nine in the NBA. Like yeah. it, was that, did it seem, I know you went through transferring and doing it, but I'm talking about from a strictly basketball standpoint, did it seem like this was like something that was the hardest thing in your life to do? It wasn't, it wasn't. It didn't feel hard at all, man. I felt like, telling you. I felt like it was a God gift. You know what I'm saying? I was, all, I was tall, I was athletic, and I was always quick and fast. Even when I played football, all my years I played football, I was always fast and quick. You know what I'm saying? Then I grew, and then I was proportioned. It wasn't like I was like, wore a size 20 shoe right. and only 6'4". You know what right. I'm saying? Like I was, I was evened out. So it made it that much easier to be like, uh, 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 organized Into or, coordination or coor quick. coordinated. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? And so I was able to, it, it, all, it all just manifest during my like sophomore, junior year high school. That's when I felt like, yeah, I'm going. I I'm know. Do you, you remember dunking on him at Jordan Camp, right? Mm. You don't remember that? I mm. talk shit to you. I talk <laughs> bad to you about that. Cause we was, cause this, this is when I knew. You don't remember, bro? He caught mm -hmm. the rebound and just went up like, ah, I was like, oh yeah, 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 I do I remember that. that. I, 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 didn't, I didn't count like, that as a dunk. No, nah, cause back then, no, nah, look, I counted it. Cause back then, <laughs> I might he was beating up this. everything. He was swatting, man, swat patrol. I got a goddamn eraser out here. Waka, waka. Man, well, and that's why I say it was I like it was that. all it was that. nasty raw. Like he got the rebound, me. like uh, boom. I said, "Oh shit!" I said, "He just." <laughs> I ain't count that. Hey, you know, hey, you know what was interesting, man. Like, I had I want I don't know where it came from, but I had no fear. Nah, you that's a saying? fact. That's a fact. That's a fact. Like bro. a lot of times, guys get drafted. You get you see like these players that are like. Gods on earth, basically, right? You mm -hmm. see, I'm like, man, this dude, like, that's you, how we look at, at him. Yeah, like, He's man, this dude, like, jeez. But for me, I like my fear was gone. He wanted them. I want, I, I wanted all that. Yeah, that's, that's how mine was. Like I said, it was going from nervousness. I was, I was being nervous when my mom made me concentrate. This before I even got to the concentrate on. That's not nervousness. That's not butterfly. That's you so anxious, right? To get out there mm -hmm. and show what you can do. It's true. Mm -hmm. So when I, when I used to feel some, or even if I felt like I felt something coming into a big game or anything, I felt it like I, I psyched myself out, I guess. So to be like I'm anxious to get out there and get That's on true. whoever mm -hmm. I'm finna play or yeah. whoever I'm finna go against. Yeah, bro. That was I'm one thing about right, us. Bro. As soon as we got to the league, it was like we was out here so hard trying to prove ourselves. Thing, so we was right. going Same hard. Thing, we were going at whoever they know at that. Bro. Whoever. whoever. And I feel like that's what gained us the respect because it was like we don't care who you is. Right. I remember one of your, probably one of your first, like real crazy highlights. I was in the game. It was against the Clippers over Olua Candy. You remember oh, yeah. that? Oh man, man. 
when Steph making the crazy yo, face out the crazy face. I was literally in the game. I said, yo, this young boy ain't playing. Change. He just dropped the hammer and went up a whole nother level and just hung up down Oluwa. Oluwa seven feet. He wasn't like no real, like just thrashing people's shots, but he went up to get this one and he right. went and hell, you know, he had them miss. And boy, I said, oh God. Yeah, man. Whole crowd, I'm told the building was buzzing for right, like the next three, four possessions, right. boy. It, it was, was crazy. stupid. I remember that. I, remember, I just remember that play all because of Steph face. Yeah, right. Steph Marbury made the crazy yeah. face. Yeah. 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 It was stupid. When you, got, when you got drafted, who did you think you was gonna go to? Did you think you was gonna go to the Suns or you thought you was gonna go somewhere else? I mean, I had my pre-draft workouts. Yeah. And uh, the most success I had in my pre jab workouts was in Phoenix. I mean, I had two workouts back to back days, and they both were like off the charts. Yeah. So I figured Phoenix might take me at at nine. Yeah. But I, I knew the Miami Heat wanted me at eight. They had the tenth pick, and they wanted to move up to eight. And then the Orlando Magic also wanted to move up to get me as well. So I was like, wasn't totally sure what's going to happen as far as teams being being able to move up. But I knew for a fact the Phoenix wanted me for sure. Yeah. So she was happy with Phoenix. Yeah, no question. I always wanted to ask you, what was the difference between Steph Marbury, Stephon Marbury being your point guard and Steve Nash hmm. coming in and, and being your point guard? What was the difference that you had so much more success with Steve that you I mean, I been? had success with Steph. You did? It you was did. premature, man. We had Frank Johnson as the head coach, and we had a, we had a young – Nucleus, you know what I'm saying? We had young players, and I think with Steph, um, I'm not sure why they why they traded Steph. It wasn't really based upon basketball and thing. I'm not sure what was going on, but me and Steph had a great relationship. Yeah, you know, we hung out all the time. He was schooling me to the game, and I was locked in. Steph and I was always like a one-two. Yeah. Um, and so I think the system is what switched up the flow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We had when we if if Steph would have been there with the system of Mike D'Antoni, I feel we'd have had a similar success. Mm -hmm. You know, being that, you know, up-tempo style, Steph is off, also offensive-minded guard. You know what I'm saying? He can pass the rock also. So he would have fit perfectly in that system, but at that time it was Frank Johnson the head coach, and mm -hmm. we had a different system. Um, and so when they traded all the – when they traded like six guys, they traded, I mean, Penny, Steph, Googs, they traded mm -hmm. a lot of guys on that, that, that following year. Yeah. And then that summer, that upcoming summer, we went and got Steve Nash. And then the system changed with Mike D'Antoni. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's Steve when the success. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah facts. Thank you. And then, yeah. And then the like, system became more of a, it was a different system from what I had with Steph. You see what I'm saying? So Steve stepped in and, into a new system with these young players, me, Q, Sean, Joe. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And that system just. Just, just talk about. How sick that was! Like, just remember how many times we would be on the bench. Like, once it started really happening, and we were smacking people, we were sitting there on the bench talking to each other, we looking back and forth. We can get used to this. Yeah, no this question. Fourth quarter, like eight minutes to go, we chilling, getting iced up for real, up a dub plus. I crazy, that. looking crazy. We looking crazy at each other, not really knowing what's going on. Then right. we got to that certain point. Remember, Seattle was like the other team that was doing well. We had like a showdown with yeah. them in Seattle. Uh, yeah. They was talking right. all this. Yep. And we came in that thing and pop, pop, pop them, and it was, and it was, and it was, and it was like, okay, they, they for real now. Yeah, like. Put some respect on them. Y'all came out of out of nowhere, like dominating. Y'all was beating teams by like 30, 40. We one of the teams y'all beat by 30, 40. <laughs> like, I remember you had the 55 game. You had 55 against us. You shot, you shot 24 for 28 from the field. 20 of them was dunks. And I remember that year so vividly. I, you was arguably the best big man in the league that year. Like, what what did that turn like? Like, did that feel like different? I know you young. You ain't been in the league that long, and I was in the league might maybe two years, yeah, maybe. Yeah, like it Christ. felt like you so proud. I think my third year, maybe. You, I remember, I remember watching the game y'all played against uh, the Timberwolves, and you was dogging ticket ass. And I just see Q just all in the background, just yeah. geeking yeah. you up. Like, yeah, I get her. He yeah. here. I brought yeah. the truth with me. And all of, I just remember watching that game vividly. But that year was so amazing for y'all that I thought I was so mad that Q got traded the next year. But how did you feel to feel like like I'm here? You had all the success that year. You know, you know, it was like 
my style of game was like based off speed and athleticism and quickness. At the time, a lot of bigs didn't have that, and with the force, you know what I'm saying. So I was able, I was able, I was able to somewhat utilize my speed, quickness, and force all, all at the same time. So, so when I realized that that was a competitive edge that I had, then I was able to somewhat take over the games. You know what I'm saying? I started realizing, all right, cool. If I just slow down, use my skill set, and be able to just let the game come to me. It becomes much easier, and I still can get to where I need to get to. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I was able to like to be dominant at that moment. And I was just trying to—I was trying to tear the rim down every chance and, I got. And, and Steve was setting the table, bro. I'm oh. telling you, people always would ask us, "What do y'all do? Y'all be running or doing?" We said, "No, we keep up with him." Right. You want to score? You keep. We were literally. Remember, they say, uh, you know, certain teams say the four man take the ball out of bounds or the five man like, nah, Steve Nash. Catch it out the rim, whoever the closest to it. Mm-hmm. We don't even want the ball to touch the ground. Get it in and go. Right. He would catch the ball sometimes one, two steps over the half court at the hash mark, and he got the big man, and he about to bop, bop, and he bam and dunking on him before you know it. Right. Yeah. That's no offense. Like, we would, man, Coach D would throw a play in. He'd say, if we get to this, like, right. all right, guys, <laughs> right. all right, guys, if right. we get to this, like, if, hey, if we get offense, we, we get an even rebound, we're going to just go first. Yeah. That's the first thing we first. Ball get players, it and go. Man, we had guys that didn't have a position, really. Everybody can <laughs> play the game. Y'all was actually small in a league that had first seven footers ball. out yeah. there. Yeah, we was first small Y'all ball. was first small right, ball. Because I played when Mike put me at the five. They started the first game. They started shine, Jake Bosch and I four. came off the bench though. Remember the first yeah. very first game, but then something happened when he got a coach. I got in quick and we took off. And the next game, I started at halftime. Yeah, and that was it. That, that was, was it, all she got. He started Jake Bosch the very, very, very first game. Halftime. That sh- that changed, and then it was over with for I the rest. So of the I season. couldn't understand it. I was like, man, they gonna get out rebound. <laughs> And Sean, like a, a key piece Tricks of that, was yeah. Yeah. like Tricks he was, was rebound, the, he, was yeah. bouncy, he, was the, he was the tricks. Yeah, yeah right. he was grabbing ten boards a game, locking up yeah. big boys yeah. and everything. Locking one through up. five, yeah. one through five. Yeah. Yeah. You had yeah. Joe being a point guard for real that nobody yeah. like. They didn't even know Joe was this cold. Right. That opened up his whole market. Remember, we was trying to get like thirty six million before the season. Yeah. They were scared. That man waited and got double that. Do, so, do y'all think experience made y'all lose the Spurs series? I think so. Yeah, they had. I mean, they was so locked so. in, bro. They was our Achilles heel that entire year. That right. entire year, they almost beat us. The remember they pop set everybody, and they almost still beat us. It yeah, was, it was it was ridiculous. The experience, man. They had a, they had a cold system, and they, and they ran it to a T. Yeah. And they that the experience they had of like, you know, end of quarters, how to how to execute end of quarters, end of halves, end of games, draw fouls, the small details that they experienced throughout the years. Was was elevated. And the adjustments, right? We didn't adjust. We right. played. We we like they. We remember the, what we talked about all the time. We allowed them to put Tony Parker on me and Manu Jalobi on right. Joe and not post them up. Yeah, yeah. We because no we stuck to the just right. And remember, we were saying that the whole time. We like, got hot too. We're like, yo, we man, man, we got like, man, like, we gotta put like put these man. You know what I would have yeah. did to him, and you know what Joe would have did to him on the post. We right. that was the advantage. We didn't. He, he, he didn't never, he never, right. he didn't like that way to play. He he wanted to have movement and all that. He felt like, even remember when he used to try and do plays, he would have us do all this, cut off this. I used to be like, man, all I got to do is screen tomorrow. He come and drop it to me. Remember? Right, Same way you used throw to right, do for me, bro. Like, that's it. He used to want all of this motion and stuff. And that was like, by the time you get to Too it, much yeah, by the yeah. time you get to down. it, they can front yeah, you. Yeah, good defensive team, too, so you, can't, you ain't got yeah. much time. Man, San Antonio ain't on that. They, you already know. In Phoenix, because everybody was, you know, everybody was eating. Yeah. It wasn't just one player scoring 30, one player doing this. Everybody had big and, nights on any given and we, night. And we was all selfless. Right. Like that, because yeah. I, cause you was able to, but you was able, we were able to be that way what made it easy. Like we all were, you know, we were good dudes. We we had we had great relationships. That's what really, the core of what made us work was our relationships, our togetherness. Right. When we came together that, that month of August and September before, like we literally, we hung out. Right. We hung out, played dominoes, played cards, had barbecue, and right. Nash was there. Nash mm-hmm. was there. That's what I'm telling you. That's Nash what's was key. There. Mm-hmm. That's People like guys, man. Steve and Knight, white dude, Canadian, he, he ain't gonna be, Steve nice going mix. out with us on the road right. to the hood clubs right. with us, right? Yeah. Doing him, right. but like what it was 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 he allowed all of us to be a better version of ourselves because we knew he was gonna take care of you, 
Right. You yeah. didn't have to worry about it. You, you didn't have to it. worry about, hey, I got to take this shot this time because if I don't get the ball, because the way I, I, offense went, it was so funny that I might not get the ball for six, seven straight possessions, but then I might get it the next five straight. He might not get it for four or five, and then – the best part about Steve Nash is that he had an intuition. Hold on, Amari starting to feel kind of like this. Let me get him up. I don't give a fuck what the play is. I'm gonna do this. Oh, Q starting to get attitude. He ain't got a shot in a minute. Let me go run in front of him and just scoop the ball and screen yeah. his man and give him a three. Like he yeah. he gonna he gonna when I say he gonna put it, he gonna cater it to you. I don't care what's going on, and he ain't gonna do it. It ain't gonna be disrespectful to coach. It ain't gonna be disrespectful to the play. He just was cold. Right. The, the, the next year that y'all played. Y'all didn't have Q no more. Y'all didn't have the same team. Like what? What you felt like? I didn't know what was going on, man. Cause I wasn't. I wasn't like all the way looped in on what was going on in the all seasons. It just started yeah. happening. You know what I'm bro. saying? And things start <laughs> happening. Happen. I'm like, man, hold on. What's going on? Like it wasn't the same. No, nah, where my guys at? Yeah. You know, and it felt different. And then Joe. Then the next year, Joe was gone. Nah, Joe left the same year. I left. We both left the same right. year. So I'm like, hold on, man. man. I'm like what? Like yeah. Mm-hmm. So I ain't know what. I was hot, man. I'm not gonna lie. We I was feel big like we hot. needed another shot at it, bro. We knew yeah. we got us one. We I was knew. big hot. I was big hot. And Joe, Joe only wanted like a certain amount of money. That's what I said. The he was gonna settle for less. Man, they tripped. He but was then they were the less contract. Yeah, man. he was signed for a lot. He was signed for like 30, bro, 40 million six, less than what he wanted, ended up getting. He wanted six years, thirty six <laughs> million at the beginning of the season. Sorry, got skittish million. because he had just signed me and Steve Nash, and he didn't want it. Like everybody, Rex Chapman, David Griffin was like, bro. We have to do this. You got to sign Joe. We have to like. Got to keep Q. And we, you see we what need happened. We one more shot at it. Q was a three-point champ that year in the three-point shootout. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We had all-stars on the squad. We got a squad building chemistry. Yeah, I dominated talk, that talk, all-star. Yeah. Talk about <laughs> Remember this at all-star though? Remember they didn't want to let me in and Steve Nash had to big boy him? Yeah. They, they was trying to say that my my field goal percentage, even though I, le- I was leading the league in makes and attempts at this point, they were saying my percentage didn't meet the standards or whatever. Steve Nash, that thin, like the like the gangster he is. Steve Nash, what you tell him? People don't know. Yeah. Steve Nash, one of the realest ever. Yeah, he is. Ever. Man. That boy yeah. used to be with us. You right. hear me? Right. With us. Doing him, but with us. Right. Everywhere. That's yeah. what made us so good. But right. man, Steve Nash told them people they wanted Steve Nash being uh, the skills competition. You know, he's Steve Nash. They want him in it. Man, he's all right. Q ain't going to be in that like he's supposed to be. I'm not going to be in that. Q in the three point contest. Huh. Then that. I go out there and say, you know what? I'm gonna win this thing to go ahead and make my boy move look right and make y'all look crazy for trying to play with me anyway. You know what I'm mm, saying? Right. Like we 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 swept, we cleaned house. Yeah, we did. We repped that weekend, boy. Yeah, Phoenix was in the building. Two All Stars Skills do, Challenge man. and a three point champ. Yeah. And the little thing with Dan Marley and Tricks and oh, the yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And, uh, was it Tarasi with him? Tarasi, yeah, Tarasi yeah with like him. you feel me? They won that little thing. We won they everything, won that, yeah. boy. We rap. Yeah. We came back like they thinking like, man, man, we had bro, we had cartoons, yeah, funny gun sons. Well, they come, we running, they playing the drums, we passing, Steve Nash passing, we shooting threes, he dunking. It was like a cartoon in Phoenix, yeah. bro. We Facts. Were, well, we was so on. <laughs> On um, big on, um. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had never seen. Talk about remember when when we landed in Dallas for the first time when Steve Nash went back. Right, craziest scene up. Yeah, them fans was nuts, man. At the airport when we landed, nuts. They there for Stevie, boy. That's what I tell what I used to call him, Stevie on the strip. Yep. Every game, it ain't known until Stevie go in that bathroom and throw that water in his head and do this. That's <laughs> right, when it's time to back. run out, ain't it? Ain't it? Yeah. That's when it's time. That, hey, it ain't time to run out until Steve do that. I promise. That's the that's the indicator. We about right. to get out of here. Right. You hit that little bathroom. It's crazy, man. So free agent come after you. You be with with Phoenix and you you, you set your mark. You you dominating in the league. Your household name, and uh, you go to the Knicks. Like why the Knicks? Like, what made you choose the next step? Well, I wanted to be signed with Phoenix. Okay. That was my ultimate goal. And I sat down with, with the owners and, and the staff and the coaches, and we, we, we told them about the plans and we tried to negotiate. And the negotiating tactic was he came to me and said, Well, we got guys that's going to replace you tomorrow. I'm what? like, What? We just, we just got to the, we just we went to the Western Finals four years out of five, out of six years. We just got to the semifinal. We lost to the Lakers with an air ball shot that run our test hit. Carter and scored in the last second. We got a chance to we got a chance to still win a title, and you come to me like like this. I'm looking like, listen, man, 
I just averaged 26 a game. First team All NBA. Put on. And you coming at me like this, like well, we got a chance, we got a chance to win a title here. Yeah. So I was like, listen, man, here's here's the criteria. You know, if we can make this happen, we can keep the ball rolling. Yeah. We got a great medical staff. Yeah. We got a great one two combination with myself and Steve. Don't change it up. He was like, oh, well, I don't know, this, that, and the third. So, all right, cool, free, agent hit, free agency hit. Miami called me, Houston called me, New York called me. So I'm thinking, like, what would be the best scenario? Miami wasn't quite sure what's going on as far as with their third. They're trying to get LeBron. Everyone's trying to get LeBron at this point. And Bosch and D-Way got the same agent. So they are, they're, they're working out their kinks. LeBron's still trying to figure out where you want to go. And I can't sit around and wait to see what someone else going to do. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I was like, you know what? I got I got history with Mike D'Antoni. I was raised in New York. I was in New York for seven years of my childhood years. So I was like, yeah. I love New York City. It's a great chance to not only not only turn the team around, but also build my brand off the court. So I'm like, I'm going to New York. Yeah. So I went and met with Mike, and I met with the owners of New York, and I sat down with them, and the situation was perfect for me. And I was like, all right, let's do oh, it. No, it looked good, man. When you, especially when you first hit down in there, like yeah. it was rocking. It was you could feel it coming. Yeah, I, w- I want you to talk about how it was because, you know, we know how the landscape of everything is, and a lot of dudes are afraid to step up into that New York Knicks Madison Square Garden and say, "I'm gonna be that dude. I'm gonna be that guy." And you know what come with it. You know the criticism, the the scrutiny, the the spotlight, everything. And I felt like you was that dude that stood up amongst the superstars, the max guys, and was like, Psh, I ain't tripping, like, what's up? Like, let me, and then, not only that, stood up, accepted the time, but then when you got there, Psh, was putting it down. This is my take. That trade was a horrible trade for Melo when they could have just waited to the offseason and signed him and added it with all of that y'all, y'all had and y'all on. Right. But like, you was the first one, and still to this day, they ain't really doing. I mean, Melo was next, and he stepped up. I mean, as far as forcing the trade and coming through and accepting and signing back and saying, "I'm gonna be that dude." But for real, you was the first one of the big boys, the big name guys, whatever you want to call them, that stepped up to that plate and didn't handled it and didn't it was and was unfazed. Right. You got that start taking wine baths, bro. What's <laughs> up? Yeah, you know what? I can't, I can't be his after man and wine bath. <laughs> but I was all I was all I was engulfed in New York, man. I made New York my home. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I was going to I was going to the Met Galas, the top fashion galas in the world. I was going to the operas. I was going to all the Broadway shows. I was in the mix with the people in New York. How, how did you get so cultured though? Like from coming from Florida, where you came from, transferring around, going through different scenarios and stuff. Then you. Like when I met you, and you know what I'm saying, you straight out of high school, still had braces. I remember you missing shoot around, like, I'm not coming, I can get these braces off. And they was like, well, he like, no, nah, I'm not coming. Like, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. But like going from there, from being a country boy from Florida, you know what I'm saying, to now you got, you you at, like you say, all of the top fashion shows, you you got this, you got a, 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 a really pristine taste in art. You got wines, all of these different things that no one like, 12, 13 year old, you didn't think that did or did you? No, I mean when I was when I was thirteen or so, I had already lived in New York for quite some time. I was already there for like four or five years. Mm. So I'd already kind of experienced the New York taste when mm-hmm. I was when I was young. Cause I left I left Florida in the third grade. Mm-hmm. My mother and our family we moved to New York, and I was there until like the eighth grade. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then from there, I moved back to I moved to Atlanta, and then I moved back to Florida. So my, I was well cultured as a kid because we moved around and traveled a lot. Right. And then so when I got in the NBA, I wanted that to keep happening. Uh, and Phoenix was a great, it was great for me from a basketball standpoint because it wasn't so much to do, it wasn't a lot to get into. And I would focus on basketball almost, you know what I'm saying, 80% of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wanted more. I was wanting more. But I was putting winning over wanting more. So I was willing to stay in Phoenix just to win. But if that wasn't gonna happen, then I want to achieve more. So then I said, you know, I'm going to go to New York. When I first got there, I went to the Broadway shows. I start, you know what I'm saying, learning how the culture is in New York City. And then once I signed, um, the goal was to not only be, you know, the guy on the basketball team to help bring the, the, the organization back, but also show the world what New York has to offer. 
to help recruit other players to come to New York. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's when I was like, you know what, let me get all the way engulfed in New York. Let me go to the Met Galas. I'm gonna get into fashion shows. I'm gonna sit down at the front row of the fashion shows. I'm gonna go to all these prestige events to show the rest of the league on what New York is all about. Cracking. Yeah, yeah and, that's, and that's how I got all the way involved in all those different activities. So we we both, I mean, you got to play with him. We all know Melo very well, and all of us are sitting here looking at this situation. I mean, me and Darius, so I don't know how, I wanna ask you how you feel about it. We, we sitting here looking at it like, this is crazy that he even in this scenario. I wanna know, you know what I'm saying, what do you think, you know what I'm saying, sitting there, you this somebody you want to battle with, who you know where his heart at, where his, you know what I'm saying, where his goals and his mind at, where he was about winning, and you see all of this foolishness coming out about him, questioning, and like, the fact that he's not on a roster right now, that's the most preposterous thing, thing going on for me right now with that scenario. What do you think about everything? I mean, you know, Melo, he wanna just play basketball, man. You know you know how we do it. We like to play basketball at a high level. Mm-hmm. And we're trying to put ourselves in a position to play at a high level by any means. And so he's still trying to, you know, solidify that he still can play, and he can. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I don't see how Melo's not on a team. He should, he can definitely be on a team. Um, and he's willing to sacrifice playing time or positioning to be on a team. And not only on a team, he can help a team. He can That's help a team for sure. That's the most ridiculous thing. You act like he he's, a off, he's an offensive juggernaut. <laughs> he can score with the best of them still right now today. And he for sure deserves to be on the team, no question about it. Yeah, man, I think it's just been – a disjustice has been doing, been done to him. It's so going far. around with a lot of guys, man. I mean, I've no, I noticed that too. Even with AI, last few years of his career, <laughs> you know, they it was a similar situation. You know what I'm saying? Where he knew he had a lot left in the tank, but even teams wasn't really willing to sign him. You know what I'm saying? And Melo got a lot left in the tank. I see him training all the time. He's in New York. He's and always hoping. He's always balling, keeping himself in shape, and he for sure, for sure, can play in the league. No question. What team would you put him on? If you had to choose a team. Golden State. If I had to choose a team right now to put them on? That's what I would say. I would say Golden State. Uh, uh, it's a good question, man. I think at this point, at this point, any team, a lot of teams can use his, uh, his expertise. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? From a, from a scoring standpoint. Mm. Uh, Golden State is a high up-tempo team. It may, it, may, it may be a little bit too high up-tempo for Melo. Yeah. Um, uh, but I also think uh, the Clippers, for one, would be kind of a solid team for him. Mm-hmm. I think Doc Rivers kind of have a, a, a firm idea on how you want to run his team. How mm-hmm. you can get him going. He can get him going. Um, I would say the Lakers, but they got too many. Uh, they got too many guys on their roster. Too yeah. many. Too many superstars on their team already. Mm-hmm. So it'd be tough for him to fit in there. Big personalities. A lot yeah. of personalities on that team already. Um, but I think the Clippers will be a solid I like solid, them with the Clippers, man, especially with what you said with Doc, because I think that's the – to me, wherever he goes, he has to be on the one accord with the coach, and the coach has to be somebody who, who has Looking that rep him. that can, Trying to get can him to deal. No, Miami wouldn't be bad either. Spo and, and yeah. Pat. With well, Spo, you got, you got Jimmy Butler already there Jimmy. Yeah. at the two spot. You bring Melo in there. You got two guys that can not only sell tickets, but they can also play high level basketball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The rest of the guys got to fit in. Hassan Whiteside is going to Portland. Yeah. They got Bam at the five. I like Bam. They got some young boys that can get after it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Miami won't be a bad spot either. And he going to be in tippity top. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't going to be in Miami. We're spo, we're spo, we're spo, we're spo and Pat. They're going to keep you in top shape. Yeah. Wait. Yeah, yeah, no question. You know that. I already know. I'm telling you. I already Wait, know. Body fat every Monday. Man, every Monday. Oh, <laughs> baby, that thing changed how you live your life. You can't even go out right. You be like, hey, all right, boy, you done had about two, three of them now. You All right, okay, this right. Saturday, Monday, you know what we got to do. Facts. So how was it and what, what, I mean, when you went to Israel to play, how, how did that whole everything come together and come about? I was, I was in New York with the Knicks. And a buddy of mine called me and said, hey, Amar, there's a team out in Israel. And this is when, this is when like, I went to visit Israel in 2010, I think it was, mm-hmm. when I first signed in New York. Right. That summer I went to go, I went to Israel, got to visit. And then so when they found out about my roots and what I was studying, then it became something more than what I wanted it to be, right? I wanted to keep it low, I was there to study and learn. Um, but it became something big. So what happened was, a few years later, 
maybe a year and a half later, a buddy of mine called me and said, hey, Amar, there's a team out in Israel that's uh, up for auction. I'm like, what do you mean up for auction? He said, um, the previous owner, no one can find him. He's been gone for years. We're not sure where he is. <laughs> but the team is now up for auction within the government. And the bidding is somewhat low. Do you want to be a partner in it? I'm like, hey, man, giving back to Israel, why not? He's like, hey, it won't be a money maker, but hey, if you, you want to give back to Israel, you want to be a part of Jerusalem, the team is in Jerusalem, and you can, you know, you, you have opportunity to be a part of the ownership. I was like, cool. So I got involved in it. Um, I played like another four years in the NBA, and I wanted to somewhat go on this, like a sabbatical trip and learn more. I remember this. So then that's when I went to Israel to play, and I played for Jerusalem, mm-hmm. and I was there learning ever since. That was dumb. Then you won a chip with them too. Yeah, that, that was their that first, first one, right? Yep. Won the, won the championship then. You know what I'm saying? Winning put on for the all city, star game, them. MVP, all that. Yeah, straight up. You got to tell me what happened that had you start taking the wine baths, bro. You know what, man? I was uh, that. Let me just say that blew me totally I away. Yeah. I seen. I said, hold up, bro. How much do that cost? This man just sw- just all just the taking wine, the wine bath. Nah, no, it, it, it costs like costs like three hundred dollars, man, to get your wine bath. <laughs> and they got these spas in New York where you can go and like take the wine bath. You can take a wine bath. So let so so. How did you? Did, was this you like doing your culture, find like experiencing things? And then you just no, you know, it was a gift. It was a gift. Uh, it was a gift that someone gifted me. <laughs> <laughs> I got a, I only got a in gift. New York. Only in New York. It was in New York. I got a, I got a gift. I got a gift from this, from this young lady, man, and she um, and she gave me this gift uh, for my birthday. Right. And it was a to go to this ancient spa, and you go there, and the gift was a wine bath. Mm. So you go there, and you check into your locker, and you go to the just like it's like a hot tub, mm-hmm. and it's full of wine and water, and you sit. It's like eighty percent wine, twenty percent water, and you sit there in the wine bath, and you just chill. They bring you a separate glass of wine. They bring some ice water. So you drinking mm. wine in the wine bath? I'm just sitting there vibing. Wine and in the wine bath. <laughs> yeah, I'm just sitting there vibing. I, I say, you know, I don't take selfies. Let me go and get the selfie. Hey, in. look, look, look. <laughs> To the selfie. It came all the way from Florida it went to, viral. to the wine bath, boy. It, it went, went viral. viral. It went viral, bro. And ever since that point on, it's like everyone keeps asking me about the wine bath, but that's something that was a gift that I happened to just, you know what I'm saying? You just go ahead. experiencing culture, yeah. you're living life in the living enjoy, life, you man. Enjoy, you enjoyed that experience. Yeah, it was great. I mean, that's what but I do so, when I go so, back to New York. So, how did it, so what did it make you feel like? What, what are, the, what what are, are the their purposes? benefits yeah. or whatever you get from it? I mean, I was dehydrated because you in there, it's hot, you're sweating, you know what I'm saying? You in this wine bath. So but, it's um, a hot wine bath. It's hot. It's like okay. a hot. It's like a hot bath. Okay. Okay. And so you, you just that. yeah, you just sitting there and just chilling, man. You sit there for like thirty minutes or so, like a regular hot bath. You initially feel it, uh, um, dehydrated, and your body after you after you kind of rejuvenate, your body feels like you feel light. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you know you keep doing that over and over, you don't feel good. Mm. Who was that one player? That he was just like a, you know how you always got that plan is he always have a good game or or he it was something about him that he always had your number. Who was that one player that you used to play against that, that used to bring that to the table? Man, it was all it was two players. It was always Dirt Nowinski. I could never stop him. I mean, I, he, we it's it's like a game lead. of chess, man. Tricks, Trick yours, you take the tricks. The we, had Dirt, put, we, had put we had to put tricks on him. We had to put tricks on him. Yeah, <laughs> talk. Tricks, I, I couldn't check him, man. He was seven one with the fade, one leg fade. He ganged me in Phoenix. I, I tried remember? to get into his body. I'm too strong to get into his body, so the refs call fouls on me call quick. Call foul quick. So I'm trying he to figure out. Yeah, so I'm trying to figure out how to play him without getting fouls because the team need me not to be in foul trouble. But it was tough to figure that. Figure that out. Yeah, and Sean kind of had the like the Sean finesse had, game where he no, can it, play both. Big threes had to go at dirt. Yeah, like like uh, basic power, power four is hard for him because he really a three. Yeah, he just exactly. play power four. Remember he <laughs> gained me in the playoffs on the fadeaway. Pump fake fade. That step back one leg, my leg Snake six leg. five trying to do something. He can't don't do see none of that. Can't do that. Another player too that gave me problems was Andre Karolinko. AK forty seven. Shout out. I, I, that was I literally was so hard. for my entire <laughs> career. That was my hardest matchup. Yeah. Me offensively, like you know how I put people. He was my nightmare. Yeah. AK forty seven. He with wouldn't the stop moving. Whatever wingspan, bro. He wouldn't stop moving. He, he ran under every yeah. single time in Utah. Yeah, man. Every time. I used to love his ass though. I used to be going. Nah, I used to hate yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, but bro. defensively, like me guarding him. Yeah. 
it's always like if I'm watching the ball and trying to see if somebody moving, coming man. at me, he's already <laughs> gone. So by the time they swing, I got to relocate. I rush out. He's at the basket. Right. It, was t- it was tough to keep up with him. Yeah. It was a hard matchup for me. Straight up, straight up. Yep. Let me ask you this: Your duo, your, your, the best duo, you and Steve Nash. If you had to pick somebody else to be a duo, who's the best fit for you that you played with? That you felt like, oh, we was clicking. And we could have maybe been. You mean good. like the second best yeah. after him and Steve? Yeah, after it ain't you and Steve that I played with. Yeah, that you played with. Uh, was it USA team or whoever, whoever you just you felt like oh it clicked with. I feel like that would have been a good duo. I mean Raymond Felton and I had a good run mm. in New York. In New York, yeah. I did. mean Ray was also in the same high school class. I was about so to say you rock with him heavy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. came in high school too. Yeah, so so we had good chemistry in New York because we were learning each other. It's all about learning each other, man. Yeah. Like you know, like with Steve, Steve was the engine. Yeah, you feel me? He get the ball. <laughs> And we and we got to keep up with him as far as the pace. Yeah, everybody can do what they do. You know what I'm saying? I'm a finisher, cure three point shooter, Joe off the dribble. So once you got that formula figured out on what guys can do, then the point guard job is to get the yeah, ball right in the, in the they positions. Yeah, right. Yeah. Me and Ray were starting to figure that part out the first half of New York. Mm-hmm. All right, cool, Ray, and we're vibing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Chris, y'all was, y'all Chris was hooping. Y'all was hooping. So I mean, for All Star, as far as USA games, I play with AI. I play with Braun. I play with I play with a lot of great players. But to have a point guard who is not afraid to pass the ball first, yeah, is always the best thing for all players on the court. I always look for point mm-hmm. guard. Yeah, I feel like if I had a dope point guard to find me when it's time to find yeah. me, yeah. I'm gonna be successful. Yeah, and the team gonna be successful. Yeah, you gonna win. You gonna have fun winning. With James Harden's success, did y'all want Nash to shoot the ball more? With James Harden's success, I mean, no, I don't think seeing, so. Seeing the success of James Harden in that system, no. And like, you know how, you know how, like, like in the playoffs, they used to say, like, man, Nash need to score more. Like, I, it was cool doing it all Whenever season. Whenever they tried him, but he Nash need to score more. When they yeah, well, I know yeah. y'all heard it before. Yeah, yeah, but when Nash, when see Nash, whenever he was open, he scored. He shot the ball. They, when they force yeah. his in, he you got know what I'm buckets. saying. They go unknown pick and rolls. He shoots it. Penetrate the big stays with me on the pick and roll. He got like a 15 foot jumper. He on the floater it. or something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. So he was always playing the game the way the game was supposed to be played. Yep. Yeah, you feel me. So everyone can say, all right, he should have shot more, but he was playing. The game the right way. He's playing the game high. And <laughs> right. think about it like this though: if he did shoot more, then we don't be what we were. Right. You feel me? Like him sacrificing whatever shots people might have wanted him to take and doing what he did, he allowed everybody else to blossom to their full potential, which made us better as a whole overall team. Yeah. Right. Because with that much talent and everybody trying to get out the block, like we had go getters. Trick's trying to get another bag. He's still on his rookie deal <laughs> trying to establish himself as a boy in his league. And he was like literally our best player, but he tricks on the max. Me and Stevie just got paid. Joe trying, him and Joe trying to get paid, but he our for real best player overall. Yeah. Trick's an Olympian, all of that, all star, max player. Yeah. You feel me? Like, so if it wasn't for Stevie coming in and handling things the way he did, he kept so much in check, bro. I'm telling you, Steve used to do no, just really by did, the way man. he played. Right. That would that that eliminated so much that could have popped off that you see popping off on a lot of teams. Man, he take himself out and then just the way he was with us, bro. I was super right. shocked by that. Like, man, this boy, man, where we going tonight, guys? Like, oh, word, <laughs> word. Like, okay. Like, that yeah. made you embrace and bring him in. Like, boy, he one of us, right. for real. Mm. So that's, that was part of y'all success, him him coming in. And, the camaraderie, the camaraderie, yeah. man. Hanging out with us like the that. parties we had. Remember my birthday party at my crib, though? Yeah, hey, when we fly. bust people with, bro. <laughs> it was stupid. Bus Crazy. people in like stupid. Buses from LA coming to Phoenix, bro. Facts. <laughs> it was crazy. Crazy. We had a ball, man. 
We had a we ball. used to. I'm talking. We used to for real get in there tricks. We Uncle barbecuing all the time. Yep. We over his house like it yep. was every time. It was yep. always. Then we got an OG Jim Jack come to the thing. Like we yep. had a. We had one of the coolest squads, bro. Like think about it. Jake Voshku was super cool. Right. Even Casey Jacobson, super sure. cool. We sure, had sure, all sure. cool like the whole time, bro. What was my man name? The first ever Japanese player, Yasu y- yeah, yeah, Yasu yeah, yeah. Buri to uh, yeah, something. Yeah, I remember him. He was super cool. Right. Man, we had uh, yeah, good was, vibes, man. Yeah, man. And that was all in one year, bro. Right. That's that's crazy. I remember Steve that's Nash hitting me when that. they traded. Steve Nash was at Mike like Finley wedding. Yeah, man. Steve Nash was at <laughs> one year, bro. Steve Nash was at Mike that's Finley crazy. wedding. Called me from the bar, like at the reception, like, what the hell is going? on? That's when I first got traded. He called me like, bro. I don't like what the hell is going on. I'm trying, he trying to call everybody, figure out like just like you said, nobody they ain't say nothing. They start pulling triggers, making yeah, moves. They traded like, me. Like we went into the we after our after our exit means everything was told us the top priority was to sign Joe and we coming back going to take another stab at it. We go home. Whenever that thing started, I was the first chip. I got traded. Then they signed Rajah Bell, and Joe was like, what? Like, how you gonna sign any wing before me? He was done right there. Like, right. y'all tripping. Right. Like, they still talking about we gonna, nah, then they told him to go get his own market and show it that he, oh, Joe went and got that bag. Cause he still, <laughs> and then became a six time All-Star. Man, right and went on to get 120 something. After and that, you like, come on, like, please, y'all, he was with us. y'all completely yeah. tripped. Y'all could have him for 36. Like, then they got rid of Sean, then they let me go. And then they ain't made the playoff since. Boy, mm. you hear me? The so they ain't made listen, the playoff since. For, for the all of our, cause we got, I'm telling you, we got hardcore fans for that 0405. You see, we the team they put on 2K yep. and all of the retro greatest team stuff, like for the fans. Cause I tell people this all the time when I get, anytime any of us get back together, we all talk about that and how we wish we would've had another run at it. Yeah, man. I mean. We would, do, just think how some of these teams had two, three shots at If we had that original five for two, three, four, man, we would've got us two rings, No bro. question, ain't no question about it. We, we was talk about it right all there. the time. We'd've got us two rings, bro, at least. Uh, we ain't had no second shot at it. We could have came back the next year and had adjustments. Like, look, we could have posted Tony yeah, got a Park bench. and man, yeah, all of sure. that. We could have made it, man, bro. Yeah, it's crazy. And I'm talking man. about years later, bro. I swear, when I was working for the Pistons, I was working for the Pistons. This when Dan Tony had first got back in the league. He was like a special assistant or something with the with Philly. When we first got back, and right. um, we sat on the sideline, and he and he was sitting there. He was like. I let him pressure me. He, I, I screwed that up. I let him pressure me into thinking that we needed a big. Because when they traded me for Kurt Thomas, right? <laughs> they traded me for, and Man. that's no disrespect to Kurt, but that wasn't our team. That, that wasn't, wasn't that was that wasn't what we were doing. No, Kurt's and, gonna pick and pop, slow yeah, pick, slow, hard, firm pick. Hit that fifteen footer, and it hit that. If you gonna hit that fifteen. And foot Kurt was a great dude, great vet, great OG, no, great, great locker room. Yeah, but yeah, like, no it wasn't, it wasn't what we were. And y'all went and tweaked this and tweaked that then. Raja, great player, great wing, great defender, everything. He ain't Joe Johnson, though. Nah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it ain't no disrespect to him and nobody else, but it's just like, it's not Joe Johnson. that man went on to be a six-time <laughs> yeah, All-Star yeah, and made 200, over 200 million. Like, he's not a Joe Johnson. Not that's Joe not disrespectful. That's and just as a, a basketball fact. guy, we know that. If you could just, just, just talk to us yeah. about it. Yeah. That's not disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? Truthful. We could have handled that properly. Like, listen, keep Q. We keep Joe. Let's build our bench strong and let's get back at it. Yeah, we still had Leandro. Leandro was young. He yeah. was just getting to well, where he got to nice be good. Too. Like he nice was nice on the bench. Man, they, they, yeah. they didn't, they nice didn't give us a, they didn't. Man, bro, I swear that was the one thing, bro. You remember that house I was building? Right. I was I sick. That, that. that hurt me more than getting traded, oh, man, boy. That was a modern futuristic house too, <laughs> boy. Everything a, was. This had a river. Yeah, <laughs> I had a lazy <laughs> river. Two <laughs> different pools. Yeah, river was going around this motherfucker. Let's not talk about it. You got a river in your backyard. Just, just man-made real. I was trying to be like Amari. I'm trying to live and experience. How many times? Remember? <laughs> look, bro. I'm trying to look. You could drive. Remember, we could drive a coach bus through my front door. I said, man, man, I'm talking. It was that big, bro. bro you could bro, drive a free lot, coach bro. bus through the front door. Come on, man. You playing in the big three? If you had to pick two other players to make your big three, all time, whoever, history, who would you pick? anybody, you won't. I mean, like a big three team or mm-hmm. on my, on with a me? A big three team, but you can pick anybody you want that play basketball. Man. Mm-hmm. And they prime? Yeah. And whenever. Whenever and you they want. Prime. They greatest, whatever. Ooh, I mean, I'm going with the GOAT for sure. 
You got to go with MJ. You know who that is. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> man, you ain't had to say his name. You ain't had to say his no name. Question. I mean, you know, for those silly people out there, them yeah. internet trolls yeah, to be yeah, talking yeah. that foolishness, yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. clarify for y'all. We'll but clarify for, for future references on this Knuckleheads podcast, if we ever mention him, him, Jay, the GOAT, the best, the greatest. We ain't talking about nobody but but Michael Jeffrey Michael Jordan. Jordan baby. That's, That's it. it. No question. No, don't get it misconstrued. No we question. don't want to do this every time. <laughs> Michael Jordan. Go ahead. Mike Jordan. I'm bringing, I, I got to have Shaq. <laughs> Told you. And they That's said two Shaq of the ones too. I said. Right there. Go ahead. I want to third. <laughs> got to get Shaq. And then my third, I will have to probably go with Tough one. I need a playmaker. I need like a point guard. If I don't go with Nash, I gotta go with. I'm gonna go with probably Steph Curry. Mm. Okay. I went MJ, Shaq, and KD. Okay. I ain't want no point guard. You know, in the big yeah. three, we don't need point guards. Yeah. You see how we play? We play big boy ball. Yeah, it is. It is. It so, is. But I'm not mad at the at the stuff because you. I mean, you verified you wanted the point guard. So I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not mad at that. If you had to start bench, bench or, cut. or cut somebody, I mean, cut one of these people. Who would it be? Uh, Tim Duncan, KG, Dirt, and Dirt. You got to start one. Bench one and cut the other. Yeah. If I'm starting one, I'm starting KG. If I had to cut one, sheesh. <laughs> if I had to cut one, I'm cutting Dirk. Mm. I knew it. If I had to bench one, I'm benching Tim TD. I'm Tim Duncan. See, I was trying to, I was trying to. Oh, that's somebody. tough. That's <laughs> I knew tough. That, I knew that was the, the reason why I'm starting. The reason why I'm starting KG, because he's also a defensive player on the wing. Yeah. Tim is a good defensive player around the basket. Yeah. But you, you know, he don't even that, jump, but he blocks shots. You had away yeah. with him going around him, though. You can go around him. Yeah. KG, he yeah, always he, he move a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he got offensive threat. Yeah. yeah. Dirk, there's no defense. Dirk don't play. Dirk didn't play any defense at no, all. At all. So they were hide, Dallas would hide him mm-hmm. defensively. He they never would, guarded him. Dan Pierre, yeah. all these other people. They would always hide Dirk. Yeah. And you would never hear about Dirk can't play defense. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But he was all he you always hide Dirk. So I would have to I would have to probably cut Dirk from that standpoint. Offensively, yeah. he was a problem. Yeah, I mean, he's he's one of the all time greats. You, you can't you can't <laughs> guard him. Yeah. Trail three, post up, fade away, all that. Yeah. But Timmy D was also a good offensive player. And he's a good defensive player as well. Yeah. So I would have to KG start, bench Tim Duncan, and cut Dirk. Straight up. You feel so, me? So, so is it safe to say that the the that Sun season that y'all had, the first, the original Sun season is like the most fun you've had in a season your whole? Oh yeah, no question. For yeah. far as basketball wise. Basketball. Yeah. And even off the court. I had, I had, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. For sure. Nah, we man. really season, we really man. kicked yeah. it, bro. I'm telling you, people yeah. don't understand. We really had that really man, we went into squad, us having man. a good time together, bro. And we were just getting started. Was, I was twenty. I was like in my early twenties. Yeah. Everybody was young. Yeah, everybody was young, man. That was the first signing out my rookie So I was, 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 young, young, was definitely a young boy. Crazy. So, so talk about now. Like right now, you you definitely one of our dudes that you know what I'm saying should be in the NBA. Even from last year to this year, I feel like you went out and you got yourself in way better condition. You 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 know what I'm saying. Your body ain't never been a problem as far as like you know what I'm saying weight on. But you you know what I'm saying. You always look. But I just feel like the way you moving, your agility, what you was talking about, the stuff you doing with your knees and everything. You look way more fresh, more springy banging on people, you know what I'm saying? So what do you look forward to as far as your opportunity with the NBA? And you know, we know you don't need it, but it's something that, you know, that that you belong. So you should be able to take that that step and go out there. As far as the NBA is concerned, I think it's more so about a lot of the NBA teams are going young. Right. Yeah. And so they, they are, uh, there's so many new GMs, so many analytics, and all these things taking place now to where like the game is somewhat changing in that in that yeah. fashion. They don't want to have a veteran in their locker room. They rather have yeah. a young this, dude. In the this this room. is yeah. my this is my take on it, and I get it, right? 
I get it. They they want young guys. They want this and that. And it's you know they they softer on the cap. They they cheaper. My thing is they need to lower the vet minimum because the NBA's vets are now 24, 25, 26 years old. You got you got the kids telling the kids what's going on. They don't like they don't got a Kurt Thomas. They don't got a Rasheed Wallace. They don't got a Sean Rooks. They don't got a Derek Strong. They don't got like a real. They don't got a UD. UD the last one left. Right. They don't got these dudes who are really gatekeepers who can really Vince. You know what I'm saying? Who can really. Like, you know what I'm saying, be example, part of the village. Yeah, be part of that village that right. we had that, that you're trying to show you. Like, I'm telling right. you, these teams need that. Right. Everything going too young and they looking why crazy stuff happens because you got the young boys leading the young boys. Yeah. And there's yeah. no disrespect to them because they don't know no better. They learning on their first trying. They, you know what I'm saying, figuring stuff out as they go, trying to do the best they can right. with a boatload of money in their hand. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, and it's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot they need to learn, not only from basketball, but how to train. How to be on top of things. How, how to eat right. How to eat properly. How to take care of yourself off the court. All those little attributes they gotta learn. It's tough for like you were saying, like, you know, twenty five is your vet. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's not your vet. He's he's really just like a, a he's he's only been in the league maybe five years, six years. They're not a vet. I think a ten year guy is your vet. Ten year plus is your vets. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. These guys ain't been in the league ten years. They've been in the league five, yeah, seven at least, years. Hey, at least that's why play into two, three contracts. That's why yeah. I salute. That's you. why yeah. I like so take you can my learn. head off and salute a boy like D Wade. What he doing right now with the invite? You seen he had like that's twenty dope. of them kids, young yeah. boys, all of these boys. He that's bringing dope. them in yeah. to to that's LA dope, to the right. to the facility. Now he's showing them top to bottom. What it takes. How to work, right. how to train, how to prepare, yeah. how to how to how to uh, rehab, how right. to after you take care of your body, they got the normal tests, they got yeah. people there massaging, cupping, they got all this. He's sure. showing them, he's he's giving them the tools right. so that they could go forward and do what he did and, exactly. and the stuff he learned. That's what players need. Right. Yeah. And he doing it on his own accord. But right. like should teams need come. those More guys on their team. Yeah. 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 You need those you kind of guys in who, the NBA. That's yeah. what I'm saying. On NBA teams, on it's teams. like on a daily basis. This ain't yeah. just a, a week yeah. doing or something. This was a week. That only lasted yeah. a week. Right. And it's awesome that D Wade yeah. did that. He's not even playing no more. He right. Oh, no, that's, that's, that's him definitely dope. Being who he is, I the great guy he is, and still paying it forward and sharing his gifts. Sure. But he ain't like that should like you just said, that should it should be somebody like that on almost every team. Yeah. But they didn't phase that position. Players, out, right. And the league is being hurt by that. Yeah, that's not you know what I'm saying because you, when you got people like a D Wade, the like minded people that's trying to pour into them and pay it for like the ones that did for us, that ain't gonna do nothing but help build the you know what I'm saying your brand. Okay, you yeah, gonna have sure, less yeah. idiotic things happening on social media right. and in the news. Period. Yeah. Who the who the best coach you ever played for? The best coach I ever played for. Oh man, I mean. Offensively, Mike D'Antonio, no question. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Defense, we didn't really discuss defense hardly at all in practices. <laughs> they score, we take the ball out quick, we score on them. Yeah, we all that score. Our defense, we gonna score. On we gonna score. Um, I did like the way Phil Jackson was orchestrating the offense. I was actually enjoying the triangle offense mm-hmm. because it allows you to be able to score from anyone in the basketball court. court. If you're an all-around player. You can score from anywhere on the basketball court, and it's all predicated upon ball movement. Ball movement. Yeah, and so I was like, cuts and all this. Yeah, stuff. Ba- yeah, it's just fundamental basketball. So I was actually enjoying the regime under Phil Jackson, um, but Phil wasn't a coach. I mean, Derek Fisher was a coach at the time. Yeah. But I think my favorite coach that I played for was probably Mike D'Antoni. Mike D'Antoni. If you had to pick one, what what would be? Your favorite Steve Nash story? Cause I got I got a great one, but I got I can't share it till I act till we actually have him sitting on here. I can't share it till then. Oh man, my favorite Steve Nash story. So we coming for you, Steve. Y'all know we didn't talk, but you know you know we gonna do this. Uh, my favorite Nash story is probably when we was getting up for the dunk contest. <laughs> oh, I remember this, <laughs> and I was in the gym. <laughs> Going through all my dunks, right? 360 windmill between the legs. I was going through all my dunks. And I went to Steve. I said, Steve, man, maybe you can do one of your soccer tricks. <laughs> kick it off the backboard or kick it off your head or something like that and see if I can catch it in windmill or 360 or something like that. And so Nash was like, all right, well, let me work on something. So he full court, boop, off the foot, both feet, knee, elbow, all that, chest, back, <laughs> everything. And uh, 
He <laughs> threw it up. He threw it up one time for me in the practice, and I caught it and bam. Oh. So I bet that's what we're gonna do. So we get we get we get to the All Star game. <laughs> we get to the we get to the All Star game, and we got the little warmers before um before oh. the dunk contest. And so we, I'm not trying to show anybody what we got planned. So I'm just going through the motion, and it happened kind of spontaneously on the court once we got in the dunk contest. Yeah. And when Naz kicked it off the backboard, I caught a windmill. That was like one of my favorite moments for Steve and I. Straight up. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to pick him up and do a dance with him. Right. And I, was, I was so caught up in the moment of just the dunk contest, and it was like, it was, yeah. it was one of those great moments for me and Nash, man. One of my favorite stories. Straight up. I remember when y'all was practicing that, dog. I'm sitting here, we used to all be amazed at Stevie Ho's soccer yeah. game. Like, Stevie, people don't know. Remember Steve used to go get on the ice at, when the ice would be down at, uh, at, in Phoenix for he'd go out yeah. there. Skate. Coach them be pissed. Steve out there going full court, <laughs> hitting the thing. Like, he was crazy, dog. Yeah. Steve was cold at, at soccer. And hockey, like yeah, what he said, Steve real. would go up the whole court, hitting it off his knee, hitting it off his knee, dropping to his foot, kicking it, kicking yep. it, kicking it, then yep. he booted that thing up to him. And he, oh, I'm sitting there, all of us just sitting there watching, like this dude is really just do, 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 yeah, easy. trying to back kick it, back easy. kick it. He going, I say, man, this dude crazy talented, crazy. Facts. That's that Canadian South African side of him because you know, how he used grew to up get on soccer. that boat, how he used uh. to get on that ball with all them bands on him. Yep. And, that boy yeah, jump on training. the ball like a spider monkey, boy. Like I'm talking about on the little the Bosu balls, bro. Man, bro, Steve, you coming to the gym? Steve, you got a puddle of sweat, bands on him. He ain't doing nothing but moves. Cause he had that back injury. Cause he had, back he used to have to keep that back straight, boy. Yeah. That boy used to go crazy on that stuff, and he yep. used to be cut up. Steve was like, we used to call him Wolverine. Remember? He was always ripped, man. <laughs> so he was chopped. Yeah, chopped. <laughs> always in shape. Always, always, always running run sprint. His ass was chopped like that. Could run yeah, forever. Yep. Yeah, we had to because that back man he had to keep his core tight. All I remember Steve Nance out there throwing them dimes and kept on putting his hair behind Put his head. Run at you full court, <laughs> drop the ball and get to the free throw line, hit with, hit with that one. <laughs> Whap, 90%. <laughs> 90% from the line. 90%. So man, yeah, man, we definitely wanna, you know what I'm saying, show love to my big doll, Stizzle. Yes, Pizzle. sir. Appreciate the Coming fellas. out, showing love to yeah, the man. Knuckle heads, man. Straight for up. sure, man. You know, we oh, got this really uh, that. we got this special Hennessy BSOP. Very oh, yeah. special privilege with the special edition oh, Knuckleheads. Yeah. Say no more. Put oh. on there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, man. Say no more. I'm in there. This was all fire right here. We got my dog Stizzle, Stat. You know what I'm saying? They're yeah, building with the boys. <laughs>